Hi everyone, and welcome back to Macaroon. So I'm sure that most of you have heard about Squid Game on Netflix by now, and this video features some DIYs inspired by the show. The first one is a pink guard plushie, which you can make using just three socks. There isn't a lot of merch available for Squid Game, so I think these would also make a great present for someone who's a fan of the show. Then I tried to come up with a foolproof recipe for making Dalgona honeycomb candy, which were part of an iconic scene in the third episode. These are notoriously tricky to get right, and I needed so many attempts before being able to narrow down the best method. So before we get started, I want to announce that my Facebook page is active again. It features a lot of my past DIYs, which you may not have seen before. The link is just below this video, so please give my page a like if you're also on Facebook. And now let's get started with the pink guard plush. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, then this is the perfect time of year to go hunting for fluffy socks in discount shops or supermarkets. I was really pleased to find this black sock that has tiny sparkly threads inside, which are perfect for representing the loudspeaker texture of the guard masks. Like all sock plushies, start by turning one sock inside out and then press it flat. Then draw on the leg, body and arm shapes like this. I know this looks a lot like a crewmate right now, but I promise it's going to end up different. Now backstitch along the lines, which is basically making one stitch forward and half a stitch back. If you are completely new to plushie making, then I strongly recommend watching my beginner sewing techniques video, which I've linked below. Once you have something like this, cut out all the pieces and leave a border of about 1cm. So these are going to be the arms, and you can flip them back to front. To make the body, you want to pick a spot where the arm is going to be attached and cut out a tiny hole here. Then carefully turn it the right way around. Now you can stuff the body using polyester stuffing or cotton wool. Unlike other plushie DIYs, this one needs to be stuffed through the side opening, so it's worth being a bit more careful here. I decided to give him two butt cheeks to make it funnier, and I think this also helps the plushie sit upright on its own. Then you can stuff and attach the arms. I decided to save some time and sew the arm directly onto the opening. This worked out fine, but if you're new to making plushies, then I strongly recommend closing up the opening first and then sewing the arm on afterwards. Last of all, I decided to add a running stitch along the base and pull the fabric a bit tighter to create a better defined butt crack. Next, grab the black sock and use a ball of stuffing to make the head. Cut off the excess and use a running stitch around the outer edge to close it up. It's kind of hard to see the thread here because of the black color, so please watch any of my other plushy DIYs if you want to see this method in more detail. Now stuff the black ball inside the second pink sock. This is the double layer technique that's great for creating cutout effects like these. The only thing to remember is that sock fabric is really elastic, so the opening is going to become at least 20% bigger after you cut it out. These raw sock fabric edges will produce a lot of fluff, and I find that you can reduce this greatly if you keep your stitches neat and close together. Now trim off the base, and you can also add a bit of stuffing between the two layers. I only used the tiniest amount because I wanted the hoodie to stay in proportion with the head. Then attach this onto the body using a ladder stitch, which is alternating one stitch on each side. For the next step, I wanted to make some black gloves to match the pink guard uniform. This is very easy, and you just have to backstitch a small curve and then flip it around. However, after attaching this onto the arm, I felt that the black was a bit overpowering, so I decided to leave it out after all. But I included this bit in the video just in case you want to add this detail to your plushie. To make the belt, I'm just going to use a black hairband. I like that this is thinner and less visually intrusive. If you don't have a hairband, then you can easily use the upper hem of the black sock. Now the body is ready, so we just need to decide on the type of guard. I think all Squid Game fans are either Team Triangle or Team Square, and I'm more on the square side. You just need to cut out strips of white fabric, and I was lucky that the pack of pink socks had this stripey one as well. Alternatively, you can simply paint the shape on using acrylic or fabric paint. While sticking them into place, you want to trim the ends a bit so there aren't any overlapping areas. This just makes everything look a bit neater. And now our Squid Game plushie is done. 
I love how this show has so many bright graphical elements and iconic imagery. There are so many things that would be suitable for DIYs, so please feel free to leave your suggestions below. The next project is how to make Dalgona honeycomb candy, which is one of the most viral trends to come out of the show. I've seen so many versions of this recipe on TikTok, and I feel that the final result depends on many factors, including the type of pan and the type of heat source. I'm going to be making this in a normal size frying pan, but for best results, you want to use the smallest pan possible. I actually bought one for this video, but only realized later that this doesn't work for an induction stove, which is what I have. Traditional Dagona recipes are actually made using a soup ladle like this, but once again, this is obviously not compatible with an induction stove, and it's also pretty dangerous if you don't have any experience. I've also seen recipes that say you should use brown sugar instead of white, so I'm going to test that out as well. So to get started, you want to add 3 tablespoons of sugar into a non-stick pan. This looks like a lot, but it doesn't actually produce that much syrup after it's been melted. Now spread out some parchment paper right next to your pan because you won't have time to do this later on. I find that the sugar always takes a bit longer to melt than you'd expect, so you can just use this as a zen garden while waiting. You'll eventually start getting small sugar crystals like this, and the edges will start to liquefy. The most common advice for making Dalgona is that you want to use low heat to prevent the sugar from burning. This is important, but I found that having the heat too low means that parts of the sugar will stay lumpy, and the parts that are already melted are even more likely to burn. I had the heat too low here, and it stayed like this for ages, which was quite frustrating. So I think it's actually better to turn the heat up higher and make sure the sugar melts quickly and smoothly. Once you have a caramel syrup, it's time to add baking soda. This is another step that frequently goes wrong because people add far too much, and that just causes the mixture to foam up and burn. I made the same mistake in my first attempt on TikTok, so I would definitely advise to only use your fingers to measure out a pinch. Don't use a spoon and definitely don't pour the baking soda directly inside from the container. This is also going to make the honeycomb taste bitter. The next part of the recipe is all about timing, so you need to work quickly. The baking soda will start fizzing, and you want to mix it while the pan is off the heat to prevent burning. Then pour the honeycomb syrup onto the baking paper and wait for it to cool for a few seconds. This is where you're supposed to press it flat using a pan or plate, and then add the shape. Unfortunately, I waited a bit too long, so I realized the dalgona was too hard. I added a cookie cutter, but the result wasn't that impressive. For my second attempt, I decided to use cane sugar, which was recommended in a few recipes. Right from the start, this didn't feel right because the mixture smelled like it was burning. It looked like wet sand, and it was also a lot darker after it melted. Even though I also used a pinch of baking soda here, this one frothed up a lot and the texture was strangely dry. I also made the mistake of letting this set for too long, so the cookie cutter ended up cracking the surface. So here's my final attempt with a summary of the best tips for making Dalgona. Start with 4 tablespoons of white sugar for each cookie that you want to make. Then use a wide, ideally soft spatula, which will help press more of the sugar together and speed up the melting process. I found it was easier to melt the sugar quickly on high heat, however I think this step might depend a lot on your stove and pan. Just keep on stirring the whole time to prevent anything from burning. Once you have a smooth syrup, sprinkle on a small pinch of baking soda. Take it off the heat, then mix it through and pour it onto the baking paper as quickly as you can. Now just add your shape, and metal cookie cutters work better than plastic ones. I messed up the timing again because the dalgona was a bit too soft and the sugar started sticking to the cutter when I tried to pull it away. The same thing happened to one of the sticks when I was adding the facial features. So I decided to leave them until the mixture cooled down completely, and the stick did come out without any problems. But while I was trying to remove the cookie cutter, I accidentally cracked the entire Dalgona. This annoyed me so much because it meant I couldn't film myself trying to remove the shape with a needle. But the bizarre part is, the bear came out almost entirely whole, so it's almost like I passed the game without even starting it. So these are my four attempts, including the one from TikTok. 
As mentioned earlier, these are quite tricky to make, but you will get the hang of it after a few times. Melted sugar can cause serious burns, so please be careful when moving pans around the kitchen. The easiest way to clean up is just to leave everything soaking in water for a few hours. The sugar will dissolve and you'll be able to rinse things away quite easily. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs and please be sure to follow me on my relaunched Facebook page as well. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!